talking about using this arm push down. I call it like folding arms on a folding table, like a card table or something, because you just collapse the arm down. Uh, the most useful, like universally useful, you can do this any time, time that you can do this, is when you have opposite stance. So I'm southpaw, I have an orthodox opponent. Our front arms are gonna be on each other all the time like this. And so you kind of, a lot of people find it hard to jab because you're basically hitting jab. So carrying that front arm like this is a very easy option for like creating a movement that's almost like a jab because it's this constant interruption. What's cool about it is that when you get your hand on the outside and you fold that arm down, you then have not only an opening here where you can like go over it, but you've actually created an opening here on the opening on the open side of your opponent as well. So when you push that arm down, you can then knee underneath, kick underneath, or just keep moving over to that side. But it's always available in the way that like a jab is always available because it's front arm to front arm. So I'm talking about this as a southpaw. Because it's opposite side stance, if you're orthodox, all day against a southpaw, it's the same thing. It's a mirror image. Um, something that's really interesting about this technique is that not only are you using it to kind of move your opponent's guard out of the way, so it's like get that out of the way and then you can throw something, but you're simultaneously off balancing your opponent a little bit. People tend to have a kind of strong front side because it's wise to have that. But if you have kind of a strong front side and someone pushes it down, your head kind of comes with it. Like you're kind of folding people. This is why I think I say it's like folding the legs of a table. Is that you actually kind of fold the person down with it. So if someone pushes my hand down to my belly, see how I kind of have followed it? And so now I have this nice big open side here, but I'm also open right here as well. So just by this movement, which is always available because that hand is right here, just by going like this, I've created multiple big targets for myself. And as it kind of off balances your opponent, especially if they're kind of like pushing on you, if you have someone who's a pusher like this and you fold their arm down, they're also gonna be collapsing like this double impact into what you're doing. Um, the thing you have to be careful with is exactly what I was just saying, is that if you lean forward, you're susceptible to this kind of stagger down if someone pulls your arm. If you're too far away, you have no leverage on moving that arm, and you're just kind of swatting at it without actually being able to take advantage of what you're doing when you pull that, when you fold that arm down. So this is a closer knee range thing that you can do. It's the same as the jab. You wanna be pretty close. If you're a little bit farther away or if you're pivoting off, you can throw a kick into that side, but as you fold down a knee, you can just turn this into this like continuing thing. So if you're against someone and you kind of, you're doing one of these where you like aren't sure where the opening is and you kind of don't know where to go, this is always there and it creates this kind of like endless moving off of the sides of being able to move like this. Um, again, if you're the one leaning, because it's front to front, whatever I'm talking about, about how easy this is to do this and create openings, they can do it to you too. So you need to be aware of that as well. As you're coming in, this is always available to be pulled down. So you kind of want to be the one doing it first. Um, when I work with Karahat, who's the one who taught it to me, he has this incredibly um, automatic movement of his hand to the outside of my hand. So he's trained this super automatic trigger that I haven't trained yet. So when I'm going hand to hand with him, he automatically slips to the outside of mine way more easily and automatically and thoughtlessly than I do to him. So you want to train that for yourself where you're like always kind of coming to the outside so that you can push that arm down. Um, he's taught me when he comes to the outside and he starts to push mine down, I can actually just take the power out and flip my arm out and go outside. So that's a possible counter. But basically, when you're training this, you want to think of it the way you think of a jab in terms of how you can just always do it and it sets up for other things. So you're basically, on this front hand to front hand, you are always using coming to the outside like this 
like a jab, and then you can just go down and close that distance for the knee or for the kick or down and for the elbow. Um, but I really love that when you're at this range, this keeps you at a knee range and basically is like pretty much a sure thing of like creating an open side. If someone's kind of squared up with you like this, and you kind of, their straight side is really just the middle, is they're open. If you push their arm down, you've created, you've created an open side upon pushing it down into your power side. So, pretty much use it all the time. It's pretty awesome. Um, but the way I've been using it is like keeping contact, keeping contact, and then just using it, again, like I've said, like a jab, where it's like staying at this range and being able to push down and move to the side and like off balance your opponent over and over again. If you're pushing that hand, they're kind of like catching themselves all the time. It's like when you get those really tricky fighters who are like always teeping the leg or something. This is similar to a leg teep, but on the arm, where you're just constantly like moving it to off balance it and create these different openings. <laughs>